you must read three books in one week. Church, I was still doing good things, but I can't do it without those two things. I don't. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you, we bless you, we exalt you. We adore you, we glorify your name for who you are. We thank you for whose we are. We give you honor and glory because we know that the path of a just is as a shining light. It shines more and more and more onto a perfect day. Today is that perfect day. Tomorrow we will be more perfect. And we know that our lives can only get better because we are in you and you are in us. And so you are the hope of glory. Blessed be your name forever and ever in the mighty name of Jesus. We have prayed. We've been talking about the thing that stops us from moving forward. There is a spirit that will not just let us go. It's like the spirit of Pharaoh. I love to ask this question. If you could do anything that you wanted to do or you've ever hoped to do, what is stopping you from doing that thing? You will tell me a lot of reasons, but if you really think deep down your heart, if you search those excuses and those reasons that are holding you back, they are all embedded in fear. There is this question of, what if I don't make it? What if I'm embarrassed? What if I fail? What if they laugh at me? Am I even sure that I can do it? And I started talking about how pessimism can stop you and put fear into your heart. You become negative and you start you know, beating down yourself because you are scared, you are afraid. You're afraid of failing. Some are even afraid of succeeding. If I succeed, I don't want eyes on me. I don't want people to make me the focus of their attention. What if you succeed because somebody else is going to live a better life because of you? What if people are waiting just for you to go up there and you can save them. What if? Do not be afraid. That was what God told Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1. Fear not. Fear not. And I know somebody is saying it's better said than done. Yes. I've confronted a lot of fears myself. And right now I'm confronting the fear of water. Somebody said, is it really important? I mean, we are talking about real fear. You're talking about water. It is real. Fear is fear. Why? Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. I decided to confront water. Why? Because I want to know the process. I want to know what I need to do to overcome that Fear. And I started by getting myself around water. And now it's becoming like I'm a fish. I can just, without thinking, just go in and just go to the other side. How did this happen? It didn't happen overnight. It happened by me facing that fear and getting into the water. The first day was hard. The second day was hard. The first week, I was almost having nightmares. I didn't just want to see it. When I get used to this particular water and I see another water, it feels different. It looks like they're not the same. 
Amen. I have to overcome and conquer that one. And then I see another pool and it feels different. That's how fear is. Somebody says, oh, I can speak if it's in front of my classroom mates. Of course. But if they are strangers, I cannot. It's still fear that is stopping you from doing that. I, I spoke to somebody a um, few, few years ago and I asked her, what will it take for you, you know, to become a manager in your establishment? And she told me, I don't want to be a manager. I just want to be where I am. I don't want stress in my life. I said, you are scared, aren't you? And she looked at me and said, I think so. I don't want that pressure. And I said, sometimes you are scared of doing what it takes to get you there. So you rather not even attempt it. God has not given you a spirit of fear. God says you're both, you're not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and you are not the last. But he did not say, I will take you and you just automatically become first. There is a work. He says, Joshua, fear not. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Only shall you meditate day and night that you might be careful to do all that is written therein in Joshua 1 8. There is a process of getting to where you want to get to. I'm Olufolake EK. Join me for just one hour. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about relationship. Let's talk about mental health. Let's talk about spirituality. Let's talk about you, Dan. There are other things that are holding you hostage. Do not let fear be one of them. And that's why I started this series of fight your fear before it cripples you. Fight it. Whatever is making you not do what you're supposed to do. You know, sometimes you look at kids and you think they're lazy. No, sometimes you need to find out if they're actually lazy or they're scared. And they're just hiding under the spirit of slothfulness and laziness. You want to know if they actually have what it takes to do what you're supposed to do. A lot of kids will not touch math, not because they don't want to touch math. Somebody already told them that mathematics is hard. And so they already have the fear. They don't just want to confront it. Every math teacher to them is a demon. And they envy people who are good at math. The people who are good at math never saw anybody who told them they couldn't do it. They've always been told it's easy. And that's why it feels like or it looks like the people who are good at math are born by people who are good at math. No, it's not because they are born by those that are good at math. It's because those that gave birth to them told them it's easy. And if your kids are not finding it easy, you probably at some point told them, oh, it was hard. And so they go with that, in that mindset, this is hard, it cannot be done. The same thing goes with Christianity. People make it feel like, oh my God, you want to be you're a Christian, oh my God, so you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. I'd rather not even have any, any of that. Because nobody has told you it's a way of living, it's, it's life. It's, it's not easy at first, but don't have a mindset of you cannot be a Christian. I can't do all those things. Oh, the pastors, they are superpowers. That is not so true. Every one of us has been given a spirit of a, a, a power, love, and a sound mind. We've all not been given a spirit of fear. Why is fear tormenting us? Fear is tormenting us because we are in this world. And there are things you need to do to begin to walk 
in the power of God, in the love of God, and in soundness of mind. You need to hear this. Hear me out today. Now, the Bible speaking in the book of 2 Timothy, like I just quoted chapter 1 and verse 7, say God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. If you don't remember anything, know that fear is a spirit. And so when you're dealing with a spirit, you need to deal with it spiritually. Fear is a spirit. Fear produces all those negative emotions. When you have a spirit of fear, you're likely to be walking in anger. There is something they are afraid of losing. Sometimes they're afraid of losing themselves. They're afraid of the people would take them for granted. They're afraid that people will leave them. They're afraid of one thing or the other. If you walk in anger, I'm asking you today, what is it that you're scared of? You need to explore it so you can be delivered from the spirit of anger. Somebody said, no, my family, we have short fuse. No, in your family, you're operating in the spirit of fear. Why won't you listen to people without jumping into their throats. You're afraid that they're going to say something that will hurt you. I better hurt you before you hurt me. Because you've been hurt before, you don't want it again. So you have a spirit of anger as a defense mechanism. People who have the spirit of fear are always anxious. There's always this anxiety of I can't make it, something is, you know, this, this illusion of, you know, things that are about to conquer them, and it's so overwhelming. Never say to an anxious person, why are you anxious? That thing is easy. No, why? Because what is given birth to it is a spirit of fear. They do not know how to overcome it. And I'm here today to let you know that God has not giving you a spirit of fear god can use it because it makes all things to work together for your good he can use the spirit of fear to propel you but god is saying i did not initiate that i didn't put it inside of you why i've only given you love because i am love sometimes it it's, it's makes you, you know, depressed. It, it saddens you. It's fear that makes you want to withdraw. It's fear that makes one want to take his life. It's fear that makes one think the whole world is against me. That is the spirit of, of fear. Why am I saying this? I needed to be able to see people with the eyes of God whenever they are not manifesting the purpose of God for their lives. It will help you to help them if you do not react like they are acting. If you respond to whatever they are displaying with the information that I'm giving to you. It's a spirit of fear that produces all manner of self-defense mechanism. Do you see some people who, when you're talking to them, when people are insulting them, they are smiling and they are laughing, not because they're not feeling it, but they are trying to mask what they're feeling inside. The fear of not wanting to confront what is confronting them. Some people will run away to walk away because they're afraid that what they're going to say is not going to go down well and it may spark a problem. I'm a married family therapist at Seattle. I deal with a lot of couples and most of the time, most of the problems, not all of it, but most of it is generated by the spirit of fear. 
a lot of people would tell me i don't i fear becoming this kind of person i don't want to be this person so i am fighting myself not to be able to be that fear image in my mind so i will not respond i'm not going to say what i feel i'm not going to be able to say it because i will just become what i fear the spirit of fear will make you stay in an abusive relationship the spirit of fear will make you do the unthinkable why do you think people get drunk before they say serious matters is a spirit of fear because they want to numb themselves before they do anything that is productive to say every anything that matters to them so they can hide under alcohol and say well if it doesn't go down well i will explain it away that you know i was drunk i say this all the time drunkenness does not explain away anything the spirit of fear fear is our spirit god says i've not given you that spirit i have given you only power i've given you love and i've given you a sound mind but god has given it to you he did not say you have received it if i gave you something if you do not take it then you do not have it i have given you it's up to you to receive it I can't force it on you if you don't want to take it if you don't want to have any of it there is absolutely nothing I can do about it he says if you have power and you receive it you need to work it now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask or imagine according to the power that is working within you Ephesians 3 20 you need to work it why because if you receive the power you're receiving it in this potential state you need to transfer that energy you need to work that energy you need to convert that energy by working it power that is not worked does not work I've given you love. What is love? God is love. Now, love is not lost. People ask me all the time, the love husband and wife have for each other, is it different from you know, the love? Because you know, there are different types of love. I tell people, see, every other love is selfish, it's conditional. Do you want to be loved unconditionally? then what you're asking is, I want the person that is loving me to have God. When God is perfected in a heart, you love more. And the Bible says, a perfect love cast out of here. And let me get back to my field now, relationship. You want this other person to love you the way God loves you. You need to push the person to God. A lot of people take their spouses away from God's presence. Most we always go to church. I am so tired of going to church. I don't want church all the time. And you want love, it, you cannot do that to yourself. If you want the perfect love, what you dreamed of, you want to be loved unconditionally. You want to be accepted. You want you want a love that does not fail, a love that does that hope in all things, the whole love that endure it all things. It has to be God. According to the book of First John chapter four, God says, "When I say love, I am not saying that you should love me." I am saying that you shall have me. That is what it means. And when you love me, I am saying you are loving your brethren. Read the whole book of First John chapter 4. There is no fear in love. And perfect love casts out all fear. There is no torment in love. But this love is a love that is me. 
The more me you have inside of you, the more power, the more you are able to accept people, to hope all things, to endure all things. There is power inside love. Why? Because it is God. You cannot love the way you should if you don't have God. And somebody said, you know what, I'm afraid to love this person because I might be abandoned. Love does not fear abandonment. I am not saying if you love the way God wants you to love, you will not be abandoned. What I'm saying is you are not afraid because there is no fear in love. You are not afraid. What you are afraid of is the person not being loved. Have you not seen people who allow others to go simply because they love them too much? If somebody is with you and the person is suffering with you and you love this person, you don't hold them against their will. Because you have love, you have God in your heart. So you cannot imagine if two people come together and the love of God is perfected in their heart. No wonder the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. You want it to be forever. I need God in there. The Bible says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Love that endures forever. Love that does not diminish is the love that is buried in God. That God love. It's the only love that will make anybody stand with you through think and think. This is God up here. You are here and the other person is here. The closer you go toward God, the closer you go toward each other. The farther you are away from God, the farther you are from each other. Now, if one person is here and the other person is walking toward God, you are still walking, you know, you're getting closer because the person is not moving. But it becomes very difficult. Why? It is more difficult to pull somebody up than it is to pull someone down. This other person is likely to start pulling you down. And while pulling you down, the person is pulling you away from God. And so it becomes difficult to really love the person like you should. Why? Because you get frustrated. It becomes, the person becomes a load. The person becomes a weight. I love this person and I love God, but it's difficult to love this person. Why is it difficult? Because the person is not moving toward God. He's not moving toward you. You want your relationship to work well, get on your knees and intercede. Not for the person to love you, but the person to love God. Draw the person toward God. Every day say, God, I need this person in your presence. Lord, the heart of a king is in your hands. Draw this person, Lord, to you. You have kids that are not doing well. Instead of making noise and yelling, go on your knees. In the night time, wake up and call their names and begin to say, Father, their heart is in your hands, Lord. Father, capture them in the name of Jesus. If you capture Paul, you can capture my child. I needed to know that God is love. Love is God. And there is no fear in love. You must read three books in one week, church. I was still doing good things, but I can't do it on that those cookies. I love you. There is no fear in love. The spirit of a sound mind, soundness of mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Soundness of mind is it that will keep you in the face of fear. Because your mind is sound. I salute people who, you know, teach elementary school, kindergarten. You know, sometimes I stand by the window 
and I watch them teach. It's hard to teach children that don't have understanding. They are asking you questions by the day, every time. When you explain something with a sentence, they come back and raise up their hand and ask you the meaning of a word in that sentence. So you keep explaining the sentences you're using to explain other sentences. That is the way it is when a pastor pastors congregation without soundness of mind. Without a spiritual mind. It's so hard. And so, all I try to do for my congregants is to help them, move them from that level of natural mindedness to soundness of mind, or I call it a spiritual mind. So it becomes easy. And so I recommend books. I do that for my clients too. It makes it easier when the mind is sound. And I'm not talking about just intellectually. I am talking about spiritual mind. The Bible speaking in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 13 to 16. The Bible says, which things also we speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teacheth. See, you become very logical with people when their mind is not spiritual. I try my best. I use different things that people can see so they can understand God. When you get spiritual, those things are not needed. You know why? The word of God explains the word of God. Hi, I'm Reverend Olufola KK, and I want to invite you to a service this Sunday at P form 8502 Cambridge Street, Houston, Texas, 77054. It's going to be a time of refreshing. Come, let us celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ together and let's enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you begin to preach the word of God to a spiritual mind, as you're speaking, all the scriptures are coming into that person's mind. Why scriptures explain scriptures? For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is the word of God that explains the word of God. That is to say there has to be a deposit of rhema for other rhema to resonate with you. And so if you go to a house of God and you're very empty, you do not have the word of God resident in your heart, it becomes difficult. You see the pastor struggling and you also, you are snoring, you are tired, you are stretching. Why? Because you are struggling in the flesh. But when the word of God has opened your eyes of understanding and the other word of God is coming, the word of God you have within you is explaining that word of God. I am speaking not with the wisdom of men, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. How do you know it's foolish? A man of God says, you know what? You need to be in church. See, it's not whether you want to be in church or not. The Bible says, keep the Sabbath day holy. That is Part of the Ten Commandments. If you are someone that loves to work in the law, Ten Commandments. But the book of Hebrews says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as some others do. One thing that is most frustrating to any professor or any teacher anywhere is absenteeism or tardiness. It breaks my heart the most when I see people who do not take the house of God seriously. 
Why should any other thing matter to you when it comes to you coming to renew your mind so you can face all the trials in this world? Why will you put men above God? Why will you put money above God? You are not just doing yourself a disservice. You are frustrating your teachers. Why? Because they want to build upon what they have taught you the previous time. But you were not there. It's so hard. It's so hard to teach someone who has missed a level. Especially when the person is mixed up with people who have already passed that level. See, I want you to see it in a different kind of way. Don't frustrate your pastor. Please, don't do it. The Bible says that the ones that God has put above you, they will give account of you. If God asks your pastor today for your report sheet, write a report sheet of this person, what do you think your pastor is going to write? You're a good student. Your absenteeism is heating the roof. And even when you're in church, you're snoring, you're sleeping, you're stretching. You're checking your text messages. Nobody should tell anybody that when they go for a meeting of any kind, that you should put your phone on silence or you should put it away. But the Bible says... A natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. When you are in God's presence, you want a soundness of mind. You want God to renew your mind. You want to be like God. You want to receive power from God's presence. It's common sense that you cannot dishonor God if you cannot dishonor your boss. It's just common sense that you cannot do that. You can't do what you cannot do with man, with God. I hear people, you know, sing all manner of worship songs. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. The Bible says, if you love me, you will obey me. Don't say you love God. When you treat him like God, like a dog, God is G O D, he's not a D O G. When you go for a meeting, you go very early. When it comes to God, you go whenever you want to go. Why would you go somewhere on a Saturday night when you know you're going to be tired on a Sunday morning? And you will not be able to receive the word of God. And what I'm saying is you don't go to the house of the Lord empty heart. You need to have gotten some revelation in your heart. Because it's the word of God inside of you that explains the word of God you're about to draw. The amount of the word you draw from the presence of God is linked to the amount of God and word of God that you have inside of your heart for faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God in your spirit man. Of all peace was upon him. God says, if you can just love, then you will find favor in my sight and the sight of men. Let your gaze be straight. You want to serve God. Serve God. You know, communicate. Communication is I speak and you hear me. Instruction. <laughs> Instruction is your life. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 13. I'm only one person that can fill your life and fill your heart and fill your mind. And meet you at the point of your needs. Remember, when praises go up, then blessings will come down. Keep the Sabbath day holy. 
When it is an appointment with God, don't mess with it. I, I, I keep my appointments with people. I put it on my diary. It has a reminder. I can't imagine being late or absent you know, to any meeting I have with my clients. When they come, whether it's virtual or in person, whenever they get there, I am waiting that we see that your host will soon admit you. I should get there before them. Why? I respect them. I cannot say, oh my God, yesterday, did we have an appointment? Oh gosh, you know what? I was with a friend or I had another meeting somewhere. Or you know, you, you imagine it's a business meeting. There is no excuse. Remember, money has wings. It will fly away. You can make the money with your strength. Can you keep it? Are you able to ensure that that money is productive what if you make all the money and devourers begin to attack you if your car starts having issues if you start having issues with your health then you start running to god when the time you were supposed to be having appointment with god other things took the place of god you are not just doing yourself a disservice you are also doing people around you a disservice. What I owe my kids today is no longer education. I owe them a healthy life. And so whatever it takes, physically and spiritually, to be healthy, I will do it. I am not just doing it for myself. I am doing it also for my family. I don't want them to come and start, you know, rotating who is going to stay around my bed. You as a parent, you owe it to yourself to become spiritual. Why? So you don't become a burden. And one of the ways to do that is please do not abandon the house of God. The more you go, the more grace you receive. The more you go, the more of the word of God you receive. The more you go, the more you love the love of God that you have. The more you go, the more of soundness of mind that you have. Romans chapter 12 says, I beseech you therefore brethren that you present your body a living sacrifice give God your body even though you are alive be dead be a sacrifice say God Lord wherever you want me to be I'm going to be whatever you want me to do I'm going to do that is what God expects of you you do not owe any man but God your life the gift of life was given to you by God. The best you can do is to let God know, I recognize that. We all sing, I wouldn't take one step without you. I could never go on. I wouldn't live one day without you. Because I don't have the strength to make it on my own. Let that song not just be a sound. Leave it. Leave it. Honor God with your life. Honor God with your strength. Honor God with your time. Honor God with your money. For there is nothing you have that was not given to you by God. Stop running after. Don't wait until a sickness begin to or a disease begin to run after you or poverty or debt. Then you begin to run after God. Let it be a lifestyle. There's an adage in my place that says, when a leaf stays too long with soap, it also becomes soap. You want to live like God, then you need to be with God. All the time. For every moment you're not doing anything, you want to be in God. 
You want to be with God. Church is not just for Sundays. The house of the Lord is a house of prayer. You want to pray sometimes, you're not doing nothing. Instead of cajoling and roaming around with friends that cannot help you and sitting in the seat of discomfort, go to the house of the Lord. Go there and find what you can do. Go there and pray. Go there and meditate on the word of God because the atmosphere there is charged already. David said, Three times I go to the house of the Lord. What am I saying to you today? You're looking for power so you're not in fear. You're looking for love so you're not in fear. You're looking for soundness of mind so you're not in fear. You cannot but be in the presence of the Lord. Keep the Sabbath day holy. And to whom much is given, much is expected. If you're hearing me and you're under the sound of my voice and you have not been taking the house of the Lord seriously, please repent. Why? You have been killing your pastor. Your pastor wakes up every day praying for you. Your pastor stays all night studying to show himself approved or have self approved. The best you can do is to go eat that meal. And you're not doing your pastor a favor. You're doing yourself a favor because you're not a burden. He says, Romans 12, 1, 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. You will conform to the world if you are like the leaf around the soul. If you stay too much with the world, you will become worldly. Listen to your conversations. Are they conversations of faith or conversations of fear? Are you optimistic or you're pessimistic? Whenever you see a situation, what comes to your mind first? One day, my daughter said, saw a truck and said what if it just runs into a house i said what i was not bothered about what she said at the moment i was bothered that something is going on in her head in her spirit man i said go and read the word now it means something is wrong somewhere whenever all that comes to your mind is fear, death, hopelessness. Are we going to pay the bills? And you're so scared about it. And you're losing confidence in God. You are operating the spirit of fear. I'm not saying that things are not bad. I am saying that whenever they overwhelm you, that you are not able to believe in the promises of God. You are walking in the spirit of fear. And that shows me that you are far away from the house of God. Maybe you just go there once in a while. Maybe it has become a social gathering for you. Maybe you think, okay, I will go wherever and my friends are not coming. Or maybe I will go, you know, if I wake up very early, there is something wrong somewhere. Don't tell me. That is Christianity. By their fruits we shall know them. If you're a child of God, you should be found in the house of God. Not in the house of Baal. David said, when he said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, I was glad. If it becomes a burden for you, something is wrong somewhere. And how do you conquer that? Just like me, when I'm scared of water, I kept going into the water. Keep going into the house of God. Keep going to the house of God. If your spouse refuses to go into the house of God, it's a problem. Begin to pray. Why? The, per is, the person is drawing you away from God. Whoever you cannot change will change you. You need power. You need love. You need a sound mind, then you've got to be someone that is regular in the house of the Lord. 
The pandemic gave a lot of people and the lot of people with excuses. The doors are open. There is always a church close by. Go there whenever you do not have anything you're doing. Check the number of hours we all spend on screen or with friends, Jisten. I know a lot of us go to work, but when you want to decompress, what do you do? Do you go to the house of the Lord to decompress? What are you doing to decompress? You say, it's because I'm so tired. That which you are doing while you're tired does not renew your strength. For only those that wait on the Lord shall the Lord renew their strength. They are the ones that will mount up with wings as the eagles. They are the ones that will run and not be weary. And they are the ones that will walk and not faint. If you are decompressing with anything when you are supposed to be in the house of the Lord, you are walking in idolatry. You are serving other gods. And you cannot serve God and serve mammon at the same time. The Bible says, seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. I didn't mean to be this hard today. Relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. I've come to tell you that God is saying, I'm waiting. God is saying, I know you've been looking for that miracle, but you need to get things right. Return to God and he will return to you. The Proverbs of today is Proverbs chapter 29, 18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people, the perish." Where there is no vision, where you don't have an insight into what God is doing, you walk toward destruction. Why? When men say there is a casting down, if you have a vision, you will say there is a lifting up. Even in a situation where it feels like you're going to drown, if you have the vision, you'll be able to say, well, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For God is with me. You will be able to say, For the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up against me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. You'll be able to say, One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That is one thing I would desire. To be in God's presence. And then you will not be able to call confederacy what they call confederacy. Because you will have confidence in God. Confidence comes when you stay in God's presence. Destruction comes when you don't see what God is doing. It's like you watching a horror movie the second time. That's how problems will be to you. It will feel like, oh my God, this is deja vu. I've seen this before. Because Satan does not have new tactics. If he wants to get rid of you, he throws fear at you. But for the one that has God's vision, you already know that God is just waiting and it's never too late. But you do not get that vision if you are not in God. No wonder Paul prayed a prayer in Ephesians. I pray that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. That in your eyes of understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his call upon your life, and then, and also the exceeding greatness of his power. That takes revelation to know that God is walking even though I don't see it. God is moving because he's a God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Even though I am weak in this situation, his strength is made perfect in my weaknesses. It is easy to quote, but it's not easy to walk in if you are not constantly in the presence of God. You say, but I can always be in the presence of God in my house. Well, we are talking about the word of God. 
You should be in the presence of God in your house. But God knows what he will say when he says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Why? One will put a thousand to flight and two will put 10,000 to flight. A community will help you to stand in the face of trial. A community of faith will even help you much more to fight whatever is fighting you. You need to belong to a community. Do not go to church as someone that is warming the pew. Be a part of the community. Don't go there to receive. Go there to give. Go there to serve. Go there to make somebody else happy. Because when many people are there, they can do much more things. People are excited when there are more people. I tell people, don't be someone that is having, you know, running duties when you're in church. This week I'm there. I'm not on duty next week. No, don't do that. Why? Your presence energizes another person, gives strength to another person. So the next time you're about to go to church, smile to yourself in the mirror and say, somebody will be happy because I'm going there today. Somebody will be strengthened because I'm going there. Above all, my pastor will be encouraged because I came. So important. When you hear that they are raising money when you are not there in church, you get angry. When you are there, they are raising money, you are excited because you know why you're sowing the seed. So I don't blame people who, you know, criticize and castigate pastors. It's because they're never in God's presence. So God is not able to speak to them. Men relay the information to them. Be in God's presence to have first-hand information, not from the pastor, but through the pastor, from Almighty God. When you abide in God's presence, when you're planted in the house of the Lord, the Bible says you will flourish like the palm tree. If you know what a palm tree is, and God says you're being a palm tree, that is to say every part of you will become useful. No part of you will be wasted. Wherever people come in contact of you, with you, they know there is something about you. They have something to take from you. You're not useless to anybody. Because everything what you say, even the air you breathe, means a lot to people. Why? You are like the palm tree. And you can only be like that when you are planted in the house of the Lord. Stop uprooting yourself. Get rooted. Get planted. Be part of that community. Be dependable. Be loyal. Be faithful. Don't come and go. Be there like a solid rock. When God is looking for you, let him know where to find you. I am not saying go to church on Sunday. I said make the house of the Lord your home because you are a child of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're under the sound of my voice and you've not known the Lord. And you want to come to God today. You want to experience God like I've described him. You want to be part of the house of the Lord. And you want to say today, something has been keeping me away from God. And that's why I walk in fear. But I want the power of God. I want the love of God. And I want soundness of mind. Come to God today by saying, Lord, I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. And today I repent of my sin. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sin. And on the third day you rose from the dead for my justification. Today I renounce sin. I renounce Satan and all his works. I will serve you in spirit and in truth. I will stay on the word of God day and night. And I will go to the house of the Lord constantly. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm Reverend Olufolake, Ikem, Senior Pastor at p -Form. If you're in Houston, come be part of our services. I have one hour with Olufolake, 11.30 to 12.30. But worship service starts at 11. So if you really, really, really want to dig deep, 
you really want to be part of the community, you should come early, of course, before 11, and be part of what God is doing. I have a burden in my heart to help those who have been Christians before, but yet they don't have a solid foundation. I want to help them to get back to that foundation and build up their faith. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, associate as well. So my passion is families and relationships as well. I let people know that the spiritual takes preeminence. If you are led by your feelings and your emotions, you're likely to miss it because it's so fickle. But if spirituality takes preeminence in your home, in your heart, in your children, in your spouse, you're likely to be able to put emotions in check. And so you use it to your advantage instead of it working against you. And so if you want to know more about PFORM, go to pform.org and you'll see what you need to see and hear what you need to hear. If you want therapy, just go to pform.org slash therapy and God will meet you at the point of your needs. Because we are a church and we are also non-profit we ask of you to help us to keep getting this word of god out the bible says god loves a cheerful giver i don't want you to have a distorted mind when it comes to giving god can owe no man know that god can not owe no man and it is god that works in you but to will and to do of his good pleasure. So my prayer is God will work in your heart so you begin to see giving to God in a good light. When you give to God, you, it doesn't leave your life. It is still there. Why? Because when you give, it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, shall men give onto your bosom. The more you give, the more you receive. And you don't receive the same measure because God is not a Shylock. When your cloud is full, your rain will definitely fall. You want to give to people, there's a lot of things we need to do. There are more people we need to reach and it is important you know i ask people all the time do you know that coming to service do you know how much goes in into electricity do you know how much the people that are playing the instruments do you know how much they they receive and do you know how much offering that is taken most of the time it cannot take care of all the sundays that you go to church don't wait for your pastor to begin to talk and talk and talk and talk for you to be part of what is going on you can decide that oh i'm going to offset the bill of the instrumentalist how much does a pianist how much does a pianist you know take you know i'll be the one to offset that bill if that god will be excited and the more you give to god the more god enlarges your coast if you want to give to people just go to people.org and just click on the give or you can text give to this number eight five five nine two three one five seven seven if you're watching in other parts of the world just go to pform.org and find out how you can be a part of this community i have seen a lot of people prosper just by being part of people we have people members all over the world the ones that are financial partners i know where god is bringing them from and i know where they are today they are not lacking. They keep giving and God keeps enlarging their coast. I am also part of it. Wherever I am today is as a result of giving. We always share that testimony everywhere we go. I know where God is bringing me from. Anytime we need, we always give. Why? Because God is the all-sufficiency, the El Shaddai God, who is more than enough. So when what we have is not enough, we give it to the God that is more than enough. Please give to this ministry and God will bless you abundantly. You want to give through other means, Kasha Vemo, you can just call us and we will tell you how best to give and your money will be put to good use there are a lot of people we help everywhere in the world especially in nigeria every if you go to my facebook page 
half of the messages there are, you know, I can't pay my fees, I can't pay my house rent, and we try our best to be of help to people who need that help. And God has never left us or forsaken us. I want you to be part of what God is doing in P form with P form, and your life will never, never remain the same. My prayer for you is God will enlarge your coast. And my prayer for you is God will bless your going out and your coming in. My prayer for you is God will take sicknesses away from the midst of you. My prayer for you is that you'll be above, you will not be beneath. My prayer for you is that whatever you lay your hands to do, it shall prosper. And my prayer for you is when the trumpet shall sound, you will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you very much and God bless you. You must read three books in one week. Church, I was still doing good things, but I can't do it on that. I love you.